Cade, it looks like we're going to get another two and a half billion for schools in Louisiana from the latest stimulus bill. Is that accurate? Yeah, that's uh, that's what we have learned. So uh, that will be on top of uh, the resources that we have previously uh, uh, received. And, you know, we're just going to have to make sure that we do a good job of uh, using that money to get as many kids back to school face to face as we can, keep them safe and uh, make sure the public knows where the money is being spent. When you find out you're going to get, what was the number, Aaron? Three million, six million, five, two billion, whatever it works out 2. to be. 2.6 2. billion. 2.6 billion. Knew there was a six in there somewhere. Did they call you? Did they tell you? Did you find out in the newspaper? Do you get an email? Say, good news for you. You guys have virtually hit the lottery. We follow the legislation. You know, we, we have contacts uh, there in D.C. We've, we've watched it. Uh, we try to stay ahead of it. Um, and, uh, you know, look, we want to make sure that we use this money well. Uh, we we are trying to provide guidance to, to school systems across the state on, you know, what are allowable expenses and how can that be crosswalked against the things in Louisiana that we need to be concerned about. And, uh, you know, we, we have to think about these funds, not just about being in, in, in the pandemic, but how, how can this help our educational system be better post-pandemic? And that's what we're trying to think through. You mentioned allowable. Describe some of the allowable things. If school systems are struggling to find ways to spend the money, what's allowable? Well, look, the, the way it works is you get you get a set of uh, federal guidelines in, in terms of things that, that can be used. And, and so these would be anything, for instance, that, that might be necessary to keep a safe environment, you know, for sanitation or maybe to run additional bus routes or to have additional space. But it's also right now around what can be done to make sure that any learning that has, has been lost uh, can be recovered. So that might be uh, tutoring or it might be uh, summer programming or weekend programming. Um, so there, there are a number of things that the, the funds can be used for. What we're trying to do as, as a state agency, because you know, the overwhelming majority of, of this of these funds flows directly out to school systems. We're trying to make sure that we're doing our part to, to provide good guidance and be thought partners as, as people think through the, the best uses of these funds. How is, what was the term, catch-up learning? How is that defined? How do individual school districts across the state, how do they apply for that money? Or how, how is that money going to be distributed? Means testing is not the right term, but there's got to be some kind of test involved, right? Well, we, you know, we haven't, we haven't had our statewide assessments now in two years. And so we, we think it's important this spring to have statewide assessments so that we can, at a minimum, know where our kids are. Uh, you know, once we once we know where they are in, in math and reading and social studies and science and those things, we're, we're in a better position uh, to allocate resources. We're in a better position to make policy decisions um, and, and know at base level what do we need to do instructionally to help kids. And, you know, I, I believe in our teachers and I believe in our leaders. And, you know, we, we have been talking a good bit recently about tutoring and the impacts of tutoring, and we've been talking a good bit recently about what a robust summer program could look like that, that the state has never experienced before because haven't had the funding to do. As far as individual districts across Louisiana sort of applying for their share of the money, uh, has that been determined? What's the application process? Do you get to decide? Is it a combination between you and the feds or solely on the Department of Education? No, it's it's fairly defined. So uh, title is the vehicle that is used, which means, you know, a percentage of students essentially that come from economically disadvantaged families within a system. Uh, and so that's why uh, uh, we are fairly uh, – we're, we're already able to uh, give uh, estimations in terms of, of what funding might look like. I don't have those numbers right in front of me at this moment, but – uh, these will, these will be significant dollars, and, and we need to make sure that they're they're used well. For Caddo Parish, in the last set of money that was over a billion, we got sixty six million. So we're probably looking to get another double that amount from this, since it's about double the money. Is that probably pretty reasonable? Well, look, there 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 essentially have been three allocations. So there was the spring allocation, then there's the December allocation that you're referring to, and then there's the the, the new brand new money that's coming out. And so, yeah, I mean, I think that that's a safe uh, assumption to to assume that it would certainly be more than the sixty million that they received uh, most recently in December or are receiving. 
uh, at present time. Can you give me an example, Doc, of things you can't use this money for? I know you can't use it for a pay raise. What are some other things that you caution school systems about? Don't go here. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you you can't do pay raises. You, you know, you can't you can't go out and and buy uh, a new gym. Uh, you, you you can't go out and 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 uh, you may no do like new school uh, baseball uniforms or, or something like that. But I think overall uh, the funding is is fairly generous in terms of of its uses, and uh, that's why we just have to make sure that we uh, encourage systems to do the best with this this funding, and, and that's why we intend to make sure that we have a a public tracking uh, dashboard in place that that shows where these funds are being used uh, as a as a means of just public transparency. I have an idea. Can can you buy buses with it? If you can, can you put in place a system of hey, we're going to replace you know ten percent of our buses every year for the next twenty years? Is that something that would be logical that you could could do? Uh, yes and no. I mean, so you you could you could uh, improve your your fleet. Uh, if if you did not have air conditioning systems on buses, you could imp- improve the ventilation. You can improve ventilation in your school buildings because that is all COVID related. Um, you, you could not say, you know, we're going to do X for 20 years because these funds have to be expended by 2023, uh, the middle of 2023. So you have a, a, a short amount of time in which the funds have to be utilized. Does catch up learning? Does catch-up learning mean the elimination of virtual learning? And if it doesn't, does it mean you have to improve virtual learning at least? Well, look, today, today in Louisiana, we, we have 70% of our kids in full face-to-face instruction. I look around the country and I see you know cities and states that are trying to figure out, one, how do we keep kids and employees safe? And two, you know how do we provide some form of education? And, you know, in, in Louisiana, we, we seemingly – have done both of those things, not not perfectly, uh, but I would put our Louisiana response up against uh, any anything in this country. Um, when you talk about virtual instruction, you know, if you compare where we were last March to where we are today, it's a world of difference. But but it, we still have a long way to go. Uh, I do think that you will probably see considerable investment in uh, further improving that that ability to provide virtual learning to students as we move forward. The heroes pay that Caddo is planning to give out. You're fine with that. Well, I think teachers and, and, and leaders are heroes right now. I mean, I think that we, we have been frontline essential workers along with early child care center providers. You know, when in the height of the pandemic era, and only 27% of early child care centers, birth to four, formerly known as daycare centers, were open in our state, 27%. Uh, and, and today that's 99%. And without them being open, you know, our economy can't function. We, we, we can't get back to any form of normal, and so we've tried to support that. Whenever you look at, at classrooms, you, you look across our state, and, and, yeah, have there been frustrations? Have we had quarantines? Have we had to close classrooms or buildings from time to time? Yes. But, you know, look, look on the news and look what's happening across the country, and uh, you'll see that the Louisiana response, uh, we, we stack up against the best across the nation.